Let's talk about director blueprints. Whenever you create a level sequence, you are also creating a director blueprint that is embedded in that level sequence. You can access the director blueprint by clicking this button right here. We'll do that in a moment. Before we jump in, I want to actually talk about the overall structure of how a level sequence is organized from Unreal's perspective. At the top level of a level sequence, you can either have a track or you can have a binding. Tracks are added here, and there are lots of different options for tracks. Bindings we've already talked about, so these are going to be any actors that are associated with the level sequence. And they're not really considered actors at the top level, they're considered bindings. So whether or not something is a spawnable, it still has a binding ID, or a possessable, right? And components are considered separate bindings. So on the directional light, for instance, you can see the last four there are going to be 6539. And on this one, for the ID, the last four are 54A1. So these are considered two separate bindings. They're associated with each other, but the data associated with light component zero is separate from the data associated with directional light. So we have tracks and we have bindings. And within the bindings, we have more tracks. Sorry, this is a track, this is a binding. So the intensity is considered a track. There is kind of an invisible data holder associated with each track called the section. And that section holds a certain kind of data. Within the sections, we're going to have channels. And then within the channels, you can have keys. So in the case of the directional light component zero, there are two tracks. Intensity is one track and light color is another track. And the light color has a section which has these four channels in it, R, G, B, A. And each channel has keys. If we go down a little bit further, you can see there is a transform track. There is a location section and a rotation section. And the rotation here is holding three channels, roll, pitch, and yaw, and then they have keys. So that's the, um, that's the part that's important to understand is that the, the data is organized in a hierarchical structure. So there's gonna be whatever the owning object is, whether it's the sequence or a binding, and they're gonna have a track, a section, a channel, and then keys. Let's go ahead and open up the director blueprint for this level sequence, which we can do by clicking this icon right here. Here we have a sequencer events tab and an event graph. I have added a custom event here that we'll talk about in just a second to the event graph. In the sequencer events, uh, what we've got here is an events track associated with one of the bound blueprints. The events track has a couple of keyframes and each keyframe is associated with one of these events. And then we can call functions associated with the blueprint that is the owner of that events track, right? Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna call this custom event, which is going to give us some useful data about the level sequence in question. So we have the first section of functionality here, and just expand this a bit, is going to get all of the tracks associated with the level sequence. We're gonna get the class and the display name, and then we're gonna go ahead and append that together and print it out. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get all the bound actors. This is actually a little bit trickier than you would think. You might assume that there would be a function called get bound actors, but because it wants to think in terms of bindings, you've got to do a couple of backflips here, but it's basically gonna print the bound actor, uh, uh, the display name of the bound actor, and then its class. And that's as far as we're gonna get on the first run. So let's go ahead and set up some functionality to call this custom event. I'm going to add a track to the top level of the sequence here. It's gonna be an event track of type trigger. Let's go back to the first frame. I'm gonna add a keyframe and we'll double click it. And when I do, it's going to add a new custom event. And because it's a, a sequence level event, we don't have an associated object. And what I wanna call is get level sequence data. Here we are. We'll compile and save. And this is gonna print out some data, so I'm gonna head over to the output log. If you don't have an output log, you can go to window, output log. We'll clear that by right-clicking and selecting clear, and hit play. All right, so at the top we can see we have two tracks. We have a movie scene event track and a movie scene camera cut track. So here's our camera cuts track, and here is our events track. And then we have a whole bunch of bound actors. We've got the camera rig rail, the directional light, the directional light component, fog box, the static mesh component, and so on and so forth. So these are effectively like the top level objects here in the level sequence. If we head back over to our get level sequence data, 
We've got the tracks and we've got the actors. Once you've got the actor, you can get the tracks associated with the actor, right? So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, hit compile. And this is basically going to go through the track that is associated with each bound object, each bound actor there. We're going to get effectively the same data, the track name and the class. So I right click, clear log and hit play. And now you can see we're getting a lot more data about what's going on with each bound object. So the camera rig rail, for example, has a track name called current position on rail and the track class is a movie scene float track. Uh, let's see, here's another one. We've got the bound actor being our fog box. The track name is going to be material element zero and then the track class is going to be movie scene component material track. Depending on what you're interested in gathering and modifying, it's very, very important to understand what kind of class you're dealing with. Because if you look at this, if we come over here, with our get tracks, this is going to be a very generic high level piece of data, right? So we've got our movie scene track object reference, but it doesn't tell you what kind of subclass of the movie scene track it is. So let me just quickly, maybe this is a good example. Uh, we'll use this movie scene component material track as opposed to the movie scene track to talk about why it's important to know uh, what the class is. What I have here is the Unreal Python API documentation. This is for 5.3. And what I'm going to do is just mouse over this object here, movie scene track. So if I type in movie scene track, we should get the documentation. So we have some functionality here that is associated with all track types. Anything that is a child object of the movie scene track class is going to have all of this add section, get color tint, get display name. So what I mean by that is, for instance, I've got like a get sections method here. So were I to pull off of this movie scene track and type in get sections, that exists, right? Especially if I spell it right. But you may want to do something that is specific to this kind of object, the movie scene component material track. I'm actually just going to copy that. We can create a new tab here. I'll type that in. It's possible this doesn't have any additional functionality on it. There's an example later on that will definitely have different functionality. So here you can see get material index and set material index. So this is actually a great example, right? Like this, Functionality exists if it is a movie scene component material track, but not if it is just a high level movie scene track. So let's dig into this just a little bit further because this is going to make more sense down the road a bit. So in some instances, this object that gets returned by the get tracks function here is going to be of type movie scene component material track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little something extra here that's going to say cast to this guy. And the object that I'm going to cast is going to be my output data. And if this is successful, this pin is going to fire. And if it's not, then this pin will fire. So as the movie scene component material track, I now have this get material index and set material index. So I'll just pull off of here, get material index. This function does not exist on this generic class. If I come over here and say get material index, you can see nothing pops up, right? So now that I've got the material index, whatever, I can print it, doesn't really matter. I'll go ahead and print it out. And then we can connect that up to there. I'm going to hit compile and save. So this should only fire on the one time when we've got this specific kind of object that we're returning in this, this uh, loop here. So we'll save it. I'm going to clear it. We'll hit play. Hit stop there. And here you can see there is our material element zero, and this is the index of whatever the, this was, the get material index, right? 
Okay, so hopefully that's kind of clear. We're going to dig into this uh, a little bit further when we get down to the channels, because that's where it really makes a big difference. All right, we will pick this up in the next one.